Hey, this is Vu, and after plenty of community requests, I've finally become annoyed enough with my teams to make this video. You suck at Inferno, here's how to fix it. Before we go any further, I want to tell you about our sponsor, XPlayGG. XPlay.gg runs a set of CSGO servers, one of which is bots. Bots is essentially a deathmatch with three levels of difficulty. Medium level is good for newer players or a more relaxed time with bots that have a 650 millisecond aim speed. Hard level bots have a 450 millisecond aim time for players looking to play against highly skilled bots, and cheater bots have an aiming speed of 350 milliseconds, making winning against them extremely challenging. These servers are actually fun to play and they don't play anything like bots in regular death matches, so go ahead, give them a try. So to begin with, we've got Banana, which is where most of the major annoyances and bad play comes in. You need to make sure that your first player is flashing mid, not nading. Typically, nades aren't going to get all that much done. You can throw them once in a while, but it's not your main play. Flash mid, and then immediately come over to Banana and either throw one on the fly off of the wall as the first player that gets behind and in front of car. Or you can come to this corner here and aim like this, and that will also get behind and in front of car. One of the most annoying things to have happen if you play banana on T side is you take banana, you get into this cubby here, you peek out, and oh, would you look at that, your team threw a bad molly and they can just shoot at you from behind car. Or alternatively, you try and cross T stairs while your teammate is in banana and you die to an opper. The much more common problem that people have, most people know you're supposed to molly this. They don't know what you're supposed to do when this smoke lands and then your opponents are throwing a molly like this. Your opponents are throwing flashes up high. People don't know how to respond to the opponents trying to contest banana control. Now the player in banana, if this molly lands, the easiest way to deal with it is you smoke in the middle. And by smoking in the middle, you create a bit of a one way around logs here, but you also just make it very tough for your opponents to actually push down and get anything done. The key though, that most people don't know, is you want one of two or really both things if possible. Now a window flash is always gonna be very nice if your teammates can throw a window flash for you and they can call for it. Alternatively, you can throw kind of makeshift flashes from this area for your teammates that land in the same general area as a window flash. But what you really need is to chain the mollies at car. Now there are several ways to take banana. You don't need to molly re-molly car. You can also do something like open the round with a half wall smoke. You can also do something like open the round with a half wall smoke that lands right about there that just prevents your opponents from getting aggressive. That's not something you wanna do every round, but you can do it occasionally if your opponents really like being aggro. However, the molly re-molly style is the most effective. What you want when you're taking banana is you want one player typically to go inside quickly and a second Second player should sit in this general area. This player can help with if your opponents are pushing down middle, but primarily the most important thing is when this smoke lands, he can pivot over and re-molly car as his teammate's molly is going down. Now obviously, you would prefer a slightly more effective molly than this. However, the goal is that that smoke lands as there's just been put up the initial molly in the round. This smoke is still up, that molly starts to go down, a re-molly gets thrown, so anyone trying to get aggressive can't get aggressive. And by the time the second molly is down, this smoke is beginning to dissipate as well. The player deep in banana now has already dealt with this deep molly most likely. This close molly is probably also gone, and they can actually go for the fight. Honestly, this is pretty much the easiest way to deal with pug aggressive opponents. If you throw that re-molly and then you have a flash ready to just even toss high like that, it doesn't need to be perfect. As long as it's landing all right and you call it for your teammate, you can essentially shut down the majority of banana aggressions unless your opponents are throwing utility that lands directly on top of your teammates, depending on where they're playing. Now, if we continue on with banana, there's a lot of things that people on T side do wrong. The first one is that you don't actually have variance in the way you're hitting B. This happens a lot on different maps, but this is especially obvious on Inferno. The old school way from 2015 to 2017 maybe of taking map control on Inferno is to take banana control and then leave one guy there and go back and take mid control. And then from there you can do whatever you want. And that may not be the meta currently. However, because you don't have a lot of coordination in pugs to do something like take banana and mid at the same time very consistently, doing it the old school way is totally fine. 
fine. However, there needs to be a little bit more variance in the way you're doing things. You can't simply take banana, then mid, then decide what to do every round, because you may play teams that do something like AUG back here, they don't throw the utility until 30 seconds left in the round, and then they toss it all down, and there's simply no way for you to actually get in the bomb site. they've got you chain smoked off. So you need to be able to call your teammates over, if you're the banana player, and you know your opponents aren't using smokes banana very often, you call your team over, and you just hit in right after you take banana control you know you call for a god flash you have someone with a smoke here as the god flash is getting thrown you toss the smoke down god flash pops and you move right in and then what's going to happen is they're going to be throwing utility and that utility is going to land behind you you know they're throwing it but you're already in front and you're shooting at them as they're throwing it and that utility is completely useless so being able to go in quickly is very important What's also important is to not just full exec B every round. This is actually unbelievable how much people don't understand this. Please, for the love of God, understand there are two types of hits. There are two types of hits in all situations. There is a pop type hit or there is a full exec. A full exec is something like smoke coffins, smoke CT, molly new box, right? You, molly, you might even molly dark. Um, and by the way, you can molly new box anywhere along this back wall. Just aim at the top of the chimney there. It'll go in. Um, this is a full exec. The thing about a full exec is your opponents have plenty of time to see the smokes coming over and they throw counter utility. So as a banana player, your job is not only to take banana. No, no, no. Your job is also to keep track of their utility. If your opponents are throwing a lot of util on banana, then that's really good to know and you can go for a late round full exec right if if your opponents are throwing two mollies and two nades at banana early and then they're using their smoke at top banana at 130 because they're scared because you could do a pop in play that you've done already because you're an active player and you had your team just flash you in and you went in and killed both their b players so they're using their smoke really early and then they use their second smoke and then you go well once the second smoke's down they have no more smoke unless they have a third smoke because they're a good team, but it's a pug, so they're not, okay? They're definitely not gonna have a third smoke. Then you have your team come over and you goes, guys, we can full exec B. They've used all their utility. They have no counter utility, right? But if they're not using any of their utility, and they're holding on to it, then you have to go for a pop hit. And there's tons of different ways to go for pop hits, but the most obvious thing to do, you have this guy here, God Flash, Coffin Smoke, and he goes forward. Maybe he even throws the Kerrigan set of utility, which is God Flash, and then a walk throw flash like that. That's gonna go over CT, but land behind your teammates. Typically the idea of a pop play is that you go in off of a flash and the utility lands after. So instead of going smoke, flash, flash, you go maybe flash, smoke, flash, something like that, where you're trying to make sure that you're catching your opponents with their pants down. On the other side of banana, what you need to be doing is varying your play is the most important thing. Typically what happens when I see CTs on banana, they do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. So either they throw all their util on B, come to banana early, they throw a molly like that, they smoke the bottom, they, uh, they smoke the bottom correctly, they toss two nades down, you know, either they're using almost all of their utility early or they're using almost none of their utility early. You, you don't wanna do either. If you use almost none of it, your opponents are, well, in pugs, probably not gonna pop in on you, but they should. If you use all of it early, they're just gonna full exec on you later. You need to be able to do a split of sometimes actually taking banana control and pushing down on it, sometimes fighting top banana, and again, one of the most effective ways to do so is you have as player sandbags, and then maybe you have a second player towards coffins, or optimally you have a guy towards coffins and a guy corner and a guy sandbags, all three ready to fight top banana and make them scared of taking top banana control. And then you occasionally need to have rounds where you don't just smoke off banana at the beginning of the round because by the end of the round then you have no smoke. So sometimes you need to do something like jiggle this ready to toss a smoke out or even simply sit back and allow them to potentially walk in, but be ready if they do with an opera in this type of angle. 
or an aug in this type of angle or you know a setup like this where your bottom second oranges and you have the second player sitting on top of second oranges making it very hard for them to actually deal with you now as for the setups on a these aren't quite as egregious however people do make plenty of mistakes the mistake that i first want to note is that your apartments player if you play apartments you should always be starting on balcony there is literally no downside to starting near apartments. Literally no downside unless you just can't shoot back and they run out at you and kill you, really. But if you just play like somewhere around here, you're going to be able to hear them coming. If you're back here, again, you can hear them coming. And then eventually you fall back in a pit. Please, almost every round you want to start with one player on balcony. And you can stay on balcony and you can go somewhere like this. This is the ROPS angle, I call it. If you're here, nobody truck side can see you. When they think they see you, they clear... They clear here and they think they see you. Then they turn to go into the site and you see them there as they go into the bomb site. You can stay here. You know, you can re-aggress. Part of the beauty of being on balcony is you can have your arch player rotate around and help you re-aggress into apartments. You can't do that if you're playing pit. And please, also, for the love of God, don't just molly this every round. Let me give you a history lesson. The reason you molly that is because if you play 3B, you need to molly that so that your opponents can't just rush boiler on you and, and have very fast apartments hit. So you molly this and then you, you molly this right at the beginning and then you wait and then around like 138 or 128, you smoke off of here and then they can't push out on you. And if you throw it a little bit more shallow, you can even play your smoke where you're watching both truck side and the smoke run out, and it's actually quite hard to deal with someone there because it's such an odd spot to clear, and you're somewhat one-waying it, although not all that well. You want to open on balcony, and then if you fall back to pit, you do want to hold on to your smoke as much as possible. Having a smoke to toss down in pit is really important. The other thing that really bothers me, this isn't the angle you want to play necessarily because you can get chimney flashed. You know what angle is better to play than this angle? This angle. Which means, at the beginning of the round, if you are in pit, play here as long as your teammate is covering truck. This is going to dodge all chimney flashes, and you'll find if your opponents go for a fast apartments pop, you almost never lose if you're here. And again, you can hear them coming, you can get some information, then you can back up into pit. You don't need to play balcony for all that long, just make sure you play there most rounds near the beginning of the round. Now the other thing A players do, they have really bad setups and they never re-aggress. Now if your opponents don't have an op, re-aggressing with an op truck side is one of the most effective plays in the game because there's no angle that is safe from an opper. What are you gonna hold here? Opper will kill you here. If you hold here, opper will kill you here. If you hold here, opper will kill you here. The only way to deal with an opper as T side, if you don't have an op of your own, is to play one player here. This is the most effective spot to deal with operas, even if you're alone, by the way, in my experience, because it's so far forward, people typically don't even realize you could be here. They are they look here and then they're already pre-aiming this side. You can get the kill, but you have a player here and you have a player here. The first player makes contact, he dies. Second player swings, instantly kills. You have to play the trade if you don't have an op of your own because there's no way to prevent this op from getting a kill. Even if they opened long or arch, you can walk back around and re-aggress this. This is a very solid play. You can re-aggress it with rifles as well. You can have your pit player throw a flash like this. You can even throw a flash behind you potentially that helps you as you're fighting. There's lots of different things you can do. There's even a molly you can throw that's gonna land in boiler to allow you to re-aggress a little bit more effectively if you're worried about that type of thing. But just have it in your mind that you can re-aggress. Don't simply lose mid control and then stay here forever. In fact, one of the biggest tells that people still do, even at higher levels of pugs, is they do something like, we're going B, I need to fake mid. We already took mid though, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna throw a flash mid even though we took mid 30 seconds ago. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? A lot of the time that type of tell, like a late flash or smoke landing, is a tell by puggers that they're going B, and you can actually use that sometimes. Similarly, they do the same thing on B sometimes, and you can tell they're going A, but it's a little bit less common. Also, by the way, if you're on T side, please, for the love of God, throw this flash or some variation of it that lands over the balcony so it doesn't even blind your teammates in apartments. You're not gonna blind your teammates fighting this type of angle. You're not gonna even blind them until they get way up. It's gonna blind people in sight. It's gonna blind people 
you know, towards Arch, towards Moto. It's going to blind people in pit. It's simply one of the most effective flashes you can throw to help your team as they're hitting out. There's a few variations of it. It's, it's all around that type of angle, depending on how low you want it to land and what you want to deal with. But for example, if you have only players coming up truck, it can land a little bit higher like that so that it gets more people towards the site. But the final thing on A side, setups. Please, please get better setups, guys. Your short truck player and your pit player are in setups. They are, they are, it's a setup-based gameplay. There's a lot of different setups you can play. You can play big pit and mini pit. This is a reasonable setup. It's really defensive. It works very well against opponents that don't know how to actually exec the bomb site. All of your opponents, so all of the pug opponents that you ever play, they will not know how to deal with this type of setup. Alternatively, you can play this angle as well as big pit. I mean, most setups do rely on big pit. It's probably the strongest angle you can play. Um, but you don't need setups that necessarily are in big pit. You can have someone balcony, but typically, you know, if you have someone balcony, then you want this guy beside the site. This guy's covering apartments. The balcony player is covering site. This guy makes contact, gets a kill. He pivots over. This guy can make contact and cover apartments, or he can just drop down and then swing out, something like that. These are all setups that work extremely well, where you have a little bit of ability to pivot and deal with things. Just make sure you're not playing graveyard too often. I see far too many people play graveyard far too often. This is a cool spot, really good on ecos, really good late round if your opponents don't have time to clear things out. There, there's some benefits to it. People play it all the time. They'll play it all around. You simply cannot be doing that. Play some setup, play together with your teammates. Don't throw rounds, be adjustable, be a better player. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this helped.